Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up in the news this week, Neptune looks good, a tiny dinosaur is discovered, and more research is done into a particular extent. Starting off the news this week, NASA have released some fabulous images of Neptune taken with the James Webb Space Telescope. These stunning images are some of the most detailed of the Blue Planet, which is notoriously difficult to observe. In fact, its rings were only fully confirmed when the probe Voyager 2 passed in 1989. Yet here we see Neptune's rings and many of its moons in an astonishing amount of clarity. In fact, one of Neptune's moons, Triton, appears far brighter than Neptune itself. Neptune's methane-rich atmosphere absorbs much infrared light, but Triton's icy surface reflects it straight back at the telescope. Triton, interestingly, is the only large moon in the solar system that orbits a planet retrograde, meaning it orbits the opposite direction to Neptune's spin, which in turn suggests it was captured into orbit rather than being formed in Neptune's gravitational field. Some amazing images again from the James Webb Space Telescope and I'm so excited to see what it can send us next. In other news, we're staying off-world and heading to Mars as NASA has released information about the continuation of the Perseverance rover's mission on the Red Planet. One of Perseverance's objectives is to collect rock samples to be studied here on Earth. Getting them back to Earth is something that the ESA and NASA are still working on, but Perseverance's mission still remains the same. It will eventually drop the rock samples it has collected on Mars's surface, and while it has already revealed things we didn't know about their geology and inner workings, scrutiny of the materials in labs on Earth will provide an enormous amount of data as we, for the first time, bring bits of another planet back to study here. And now over to Ben with some eradication. Thanks, Doug. First up in the paleontology news this week is a remarkable description of a new species of dwarf titanosaur from Brazil. Named Iberania parva, it comes from the Upper Cretaceous, and the material it's based on belonged to individuals that were fully grown at the time of their deaths. Amazingly though, this species achieved lengths of just 5.7 meters, absolutely tiny in comparison to other titanosaurs, which grew to become the largest land animals of all time. Iberania is therefore one of the smallest sauropods discovered so far, and is classified within the titanosaurs as a Soltosaurine, a grouping that does actually contain other relatively small-bodied members suggesting that this repeated body size decrease in certain titanosaurs was caused by recurring ecological conditions at this time in South America, which is a very interesting idea. Also in the news this week is the incredible description of the internal organs of a vertebrate that's more than 370 million years old. A formation in Australia that dates back to the late Devonian has produced an exceptional fossil of a kind of early-jawed vertebrate known as a placoderm, commonly called the armoured fish. This fossil is utterly stunning, preserving a three-dimensional mineralized heart, a stomach with thick walls, and a bilobed liver. The researchers used microtomography techniques to show that the heart is actually S-shaped and quite flat, and that there are no lungs present in the animal. Not only does this new data tell us so much about how these organs change shape over the evolution of vertebrates, but the absence of lungs, or more technically a swim bladder, actually disproves the hypothesis that lungs were ancestral to all jawed vertebrates and later lost in the cartilaginous fish, as some had argued. Instead, lungs must have evolved a single time around the origin of the bony fishes. A really interesting study too, then. Finally, there's been an interesting study that's found evidence to suggest the non-avian dinosaurs were in decline just before the end Cretaceous mass extinction event. Researchers collected more than 1,000 dinosaur eggshells from a single locality in China, and using multiple different approaches managed to create a framework for the positions of the fossils to a resolution of 100,000 years. Quite an impressive achievement. They then found that only three eggshell taxa were present for the last 2 million years of the Cretaceous in this region, indicating sustained low dinosaur biodiversity right before the mass extinction. As the authors explain, the question of whether or not non-avian dinosaurs were declining before the asteroid impact and volcanism is a very controversial topic, with many conflicting studies, but this one at least seems to support the hypothesis that there was an actual decline. So it's interesting, and we'll again have to wait for future research to be done on this fascinating topic. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next week.